Romanticism and Byzantine art are the art trends of the Middle Ages. The first one formed under the influence of the West, that is Rome and the Church, and the latter is part of the Eastern or Greek ritual and Christian culture. Romanticism is the first universal art style of the Western Church. The name given to it by French researchers of the 19th century had to emphasize the Roman roots of this art. The style formed in France and Germany. In the 11th and 12th centuries, it spread through Christian European countries. In some places it lasted until the end of the 13th century. Romanesque style churches are of simple content and rational design. Massive walls are most often built from ashlar blocks. Typical characteristics of Romanesque architecture are semicircular arches used in different ways and decorated with embossed sculptures of symbolic and allegoric content, as well as stylized plant ornaments which were often symmetrically angular. The origins of Byzantine style lie in the Hellenistic culture of the Roman Empire. The style which formed in the Byzantine Empire and remained viable for as long as the end of the 17th century had a big influence on all the later art of the Eastern Church. A type of church with a criss-cross dome appeared in Byzantium. This is where images of saints, icons, began to be painted. Mosaic and wall painting was often used for church decoration. Ivory articles of exceptionally high quality made by Byzantine craftsmen, fabrics and pieces of art created by goldsmiths were highly valued among contemporaries. The influence of Byzantine art is also noticed in Romanesque art. Both artistic traditions were present in the environment of a forming Lithuanian state in the 13th century. The Balts dealt with Christian culture during the time of the Crusades through trade relations and eventually through missionaries who came to our country. Before the formation of the state and official Christianing, Christian churches did not have the opportunity to spread in the Baltic lands. At the end of the 12th century, Christian missions landed in the region around the mouth of the Daugava River. In 1186 in Ixkila, on the bank of the Daugava River, missionary Bishop Meinhard built the first stone cathedral in the Baltic region and established a diocese. In 1252, according to an agreement between the Livonian order and the Kursha's bishop, Klaipeda or Memelburg castle was built. In 1255, Karalauchus or Königsberg castle was built in Semba. The Lithuanian state, which was in the process of formation, joined together the bigger part of the lands that belonged to the Baltic tribes and the closest areas of Slavic Dragovice lands, Gardenas, Nogardukas, Slonim, Volkovisk, in which the Eastern Church was already entrenched. King Mindaugas, the founder of the Lithuanian state, accepted Christianity from the hands of the Roman Church. In the summer of 1251, Mindaugas, with his wife Morta, his sons and a large number of pagans, were Christianed by Christianas, a priest of the Livonian order. Mindaugas' Christianing and the realities associated with this important historic event opened the doors for Christian art and culture. There are very few relics of Lithuanian artistic culture from the 13th century. Archaeological sources only slightly add to the sparse documentation. No architectural monuments from that century remained. German castles built in Lithuania were leveled, and wooden Lithuanian castles rotted away. Their location and type of fortification are revealed by the many mounds that survived. Archaeological material from the mounds that were researched more thoroughly enables scientists to recreate a hypothetical image of such wooden castles. However, many concrete details of their furnishings and decoration have already been lost. Archaeological and architectural research has shown that Mindaugas' first stone cathedral was built in Vilnius. It was likely that Bishop Christianus's throne stood there and that the coronation ceremony took place there as well. There is no reliable evidence about the architecture of the church which survived barely a decade, nor about its construction or liturgical articles. Most likely the cathedral had Roman and early Gothic features. When establishing the diocese and preparing for the coronation, the cathedral had to be honored with gifts that were worthy of the ruler. Besides the king himself and Queen Morta, the bishop also had to supply expensive and artistic liturgical items to the most important Lithuanian church. It is believed that insignia of the Lithuanian rulers, two royal diadems or crowns created by Riga goldsmiths, and brought to Lithuania for the coronation celebration, a sword, a ring and other treasures were kept in the Vilnius Cathedral. The first liturgical clothes, dishes and pieces of art were brought to Lithuania from other countries. 
However, there were skillful craftsmen in the country at that time as well. Expensive gifts given by Lithuanians to rulers of other countries are quite often mentioned in historical sources. Artistic articles found by archaeologists illustrate the fact that dukes, noblemen or rich merchants had especially valuable articles. Silver jewelry is distinguished by the variety of traditional techniques and masterful realization. Digs in Kernave in recent years provided a lot of interesting material for research of artistic culture. This town especially prospered when Duke Treidanis, the most famous Lithuanian ruler of the 13th century after Mindaugas, was in power. Kernave, like most Lithuanian towns of that time, had many wooden buildings. However, as the remains of the old towers of Nogardukas or fragments of stone buildings in the territory of Vilnius Castle illustrate, the 13th century can be marked as the beginning of stone construction in Lithuania. At that time, the stone construction technique began to be at least partially used in the walls of wooden castles by integrating stone towers into them. It is believed that after the cathedral was demolished when Mindogas and his family were murdered, a pagan stone temple was built on the remaining foundations. Even though the state returned to paganism, the orthodox religion became more and more important to many noblemen in the country. It was accepted by Totvilas' sister, who was the wife of Danila, the Duke of Voluine. Mindogas' own daughters, who were married off to Danila's sons Švarnas and Romanas, and Mindogas' son Vaishvilkas, who became an orthodox monk. Franciscan and Dominican monks continued spreading Catholicism in the country. For over one century, Lithuanian rulers balanced between the Eastern Church and the Roman Church before they more decisively turned in the direction of the Western culture.